It's eight, eight o'clock and four minutes right now. Okay, uh, thank you everybody. So um, this is an approximation algorithm coming up uh, for the Steiner tree problem is joint work with Xiaolang Wang who did this as part of his PhD thesis. All right, so I will define the problems and then tell you what we achieved compared to previous work and talk a little bit of uh, our algorithms. And there's one page of conclusions and what is left to be done. So, uh, so how many here are familiar with the Steiner tree problem? Okay, we have <laughs> three, four. I mean, it's a, uh, uh, I have an audience people who have seen this before, this talk. So we have, um, um, undirected graph given uh, vertices and edges with a non-negative cost on the edges. And among the vertices, there are special vertices uh, called the terminal. So this is the set R. Uh, the goal is to find a set of edges such that uh, there exists a path between any two vertices of R. So this is a generalization of uh, a minimum spanning tree because uh, we only have to connect the terminals. We do not have to connect all the vertices. Um, so uh, we want to find the minimum cost such set of edges. And in most scenarios, including ours, ours you can assume that this cost is a, a semi-metric. That means besides being non-negative, we have this triangle inequality. Uh, The cost of an edge UV is at most the, con uh, uh, it's no more than cost of UX plus cost of X V for every U and V. Excuse me for the typo. I miss it the second time. All right, okay, this is an NP hard problem. And it's one of the, and appears in the, the second paper on NP hardness, not Cook's theorem, but the following one. Uh, and it is a central, um, problem in approximation algorithms. Uh, I, uh, uh, I tried and failed to improve the Steiner tree approximation ratio. Um, so being NP hard, we want a polynomial time algorithm, at least theoretically. And we compare the cost of the output with the cost of optimum solution. And we have the, an approximation ratio, Q is called rho. We want it as small as possible so that the cost of output is at most rho times cost of optimum. And this, this rho depends on the algorithm. All right, so there have been a, a series of papers for this uh, Steiner tree problem, starting with an approximation ratio of two, which is obtained by computing a minimum spanning tree on a graph of terminals only. And then 11 over six, one plus logarithm of two, that's the relative greedy heuristic, which will come up in this talk uh, later. Then uh, the 3D composition method gives an approximation ratio of five thirds. It uh, has been improved to this 1.55, one for logarithm of three over two. And by now the best known approximation ratio is logarithm of four, uh, plus epsilon. Mm, I will explain where this epsilon comes uh, a little bit later because it comes out in our variance as well, uh, in one of them. Okay, so the best known ratio right now is obtained by this um, iterative randomized rounding algorithm, which is quite sophisticated and it's 1.39. So that's the, the, the big Steiner tree problem. If you have questions, maybe. Uh, Ask. Okay, next, uh, uh, the approaches for Steiner tree, uh, so uh, getting approximation ratio better than two, uh, even for two actually, we use these uh, uh, full components as, uh, as a tool. So we take the Steiner tree, which um, here we, in this picture, we have uh, required vertices and uh, 
non-required vertices also called Steiner points. So the required vertices are uh, the squares and the Steiner points are the uh, field circle. And imagine that uh, maybe the distance between two points is just the Euclidean distance in the plane here. Uh, so we want to connect the um, squares, the terminals at minimum cost, and we can use um, Steiner points for this, and we can get something smaller than the minimum spanning tree by doing that, um, by using these Steiner points. Now with, um, with the full components, we take the resulting Steiner tree and we decompose it so that in every component, all the, it's, it's gonna be a tree in, uh, in that uh, subtree, every internal vertex is a Steiner point and every leaf is a terminal. And then we make these components as big as possible, subject to this. So here I have three full components. One full components have no Steiner points. Okay, so I need this definition because um, uh, the algorithms I describes also use it. In fact, when you want to approximate Steiner tree, you are gonna use full components. Okay, so uh, what I have in this talk are the variants of Steiner tree. There is uh, the Steiner tree with minimum number of Steiner points. It's the first of them. So here, the input is again a set of terminals R, but they are given as coordinates in uh, R2. And we are going to allow to insert points. There is a question on in chat. Is it uh, possible we have no edges between two terminal terminals, right? Uh, in the definition of the problem, initially there is a graph, and oops, I, I jumped too much. And uh, uh, I will uh, I will assume that the graph is complete and it's a semi-metric. So there is an edge between two terminals. Uh, generally, we can do that by taking uh, shortest paths. And uh, so compute the shortest path distance between two terminals and define the cost of an edge to be the uh, length of that path, right? Ah, I see. Uh, is it like adding an extra alternate edge for every shortest path and using that? Yes. Thank, yes. You, thank you so much. Why this work requires a little proof. It's, a, it's an exercise in the textbooks. Thank you. Sure. So here we have uh, to construct a Steiner tree spanning the terminals with minimum total Euclidean distance. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, by inserting Steiner points S. So uh, uh, R are the terminals, S are the Steiner points again. But here, instead of counting the distance, the total distance, we count the number of points we insert. However, I mean, we insist that the distance between uh, any two points of this tree to be at most one, the Euclidean distance. Okay. So uh, an equivalent definition, we want to insert a minimum number of Steiner points such that the unit this graph induced by this uh, uh, Steiner points union, the terminals is connected. And the goal is to minimize the number of Steiner points. Okay, so it's not an issue of length now, it's a number of points we insert. And I'm only looking at these problems in the um, Euclidean space. Uh, the same problem in, in, in graphs or arbitrary metric, if we define it, it's harder. Okay, so even in the Euclidean space, this problem is NP hard. Uh, there is a paper from 99, also gives that, uh, obtains a ratio of five using a minimum spanning tree like Albert, which I will describe uh, soon. And uh, it comes here. So I, uh, I take maybe the same instance with the, uh, same seven required vertices 
And you know, imagine that the distance between any two points where I draw a line there, a solid line is at most one. So we inserted three uh, Steiner points, which are the solid circles. And now the distance, we created a tree in which the distance between any two adjacent vertices in this tree is at most one. And that could be an optimum solution. We only use uh, three Steiner points. Now we can get uh, the same instance and compute for any two terminals, the distance between them as how many Steiner points we need to insert to, to make those uh, just connect two terminals. And uh, uh, suppose the distance are such that, that we can do here this with uh, a set of, to connect two terminals on, uh, on top, we use one and extra Steiner point. That Steiner point will have degree two in the solution and sometimes called a bead in some of the papers using this minimum spanning tree algorithm. So we compute the distance between the terminals, the number of beads we need to insert to connect these two terminals. Then we get this a complete graph. We write the minimum spanning tree algorithm and then just use that one as a solution. So here, the, in this example, the bit solution has cost six. So this first paper proved that the bit solution of is a ratio of five. Uh, a subsequent work showed that the bit solution minimum spanning tree has ratio of four. There were two papers which achieved that uh, about the same time. And then an algorithm with ratio of three was uh, uh, published in 2001. In 2008, uh, a 3D composition algorithm, I will talk about a bit later, has ratio 2.5 plus epsilon. Uh, that was in 2008. About 2021, a paper was published which gives a, a a better algorithm for finding the minimum cost 3D composition, uh, which, which an exact algorithm. So the ratio becomes 2.5. There is no epsilon there. And in 2018, the relative greedy method, which was the first device for Steiner tree, can be used here to get a ratio of uh, one plus logarithm of four plus epsilon. So that's about 2.386. And the other one is 2.5 for, 3D compositions. And what we did, uh, we obtained that the best of the two algorithms, this is the 3D composition and relative greedy, the best of those two has ratio uh, 2.277. So we improved the ratio without giving a new algorithm. We said just the output of this or the output of that, pick up the best. Okay, now I'm coming to discuss a 3D composition method, uh, idea. So um, we can uh, look at the following problem. So we're given a, a three hypergraph. So here edges, uh, you know, in a graph an edge has two vertices. Here we allow an edge to have two or three vertices. And we want a minimum cost set of hyper edges that connects all the given vertices. So this is like a generalization of minimum spanning tree. This actually can be done in polynomial time. That's the, that's the um, Iwata and Kobayashi paper. Previously, there was, the, there was still exist an uh, approximation scheme, but by now it's polynomial. Okay. So uh, the method using 3D composition says start with a, a full component and uh, split it into full components, which uh, use only three terminals each. And uh, the paper, which got 2.5 approximation, said that for any full component, we can split it into uh, uh, components which have only three terminals each, such that the number of Steiner points used is 2.5 times the number of uh, Steiner points in the initial full component, all right. And then they were using the approximation scheme to get the approximation ratio of 2.5 plus epsilon. Now that's not needed. Uh, so for every three uh, uh, terminals, you compute the minimum cost 
uh, uh, three restricted component for those three terminals, create a hyper H with the weight of the number of Steiner trees there, and then feed it to the, uh, to the minimum spanning uh, hypergraph uh, problem and get 2.5 ratio. Okay, so that's one of the methods has been used before and got ratio of 2.5. The other one is the relative greedy. Uh, so Cohen and Newtoff proved that uh, if K uh, goes to infinity and we use K restricted instead of three restricted components, uh, you get, uh, you lose a just one epsilon. Of course, you cannot compute it for larger K larger than three. It's not polynomial time anymore, but the relative greedy heuristics um, will uh, give you an approximation. Uh, uh, before that, the previous paper already have done the fact that you can, for fixed K, you can get the best uh, the number of Steiner points which connect those um, uh, K terminals in this time, K times L to power three to power K. So it's a humongous number, but is um, is uh, it's a it's a function of k that doesn't depend on the input size n. Also, it depends on the largest interterminal distance. But then the output of this problem will also depend on the largest in the interterminal distance. All right, so. Uh, uh, how is this method working? It starts with the minimum spanning trees. So I'm talking about relative greedy on the terminals only. And then it tries to find a set in this case of points with at most uh, K vertices, such that uh, oh, sorry, a set B of terminals with at most K vertices, uh, such that adding a hyper edge connecting those terminals B uh, what can we remove from the tree uh, to, to keep it connected? And uh, uh, you want the, you are going to try all sets uh, of size at most K for this B. And you find the one such that the weight of B divided by the uh, cost of F of B is minimized, where F of B is the set of uh, the best set of edges from the tree that need to be removed uh, to keep this connected. So in the picture on the right, we can use one Steiner point uh, uh, to connect uh, at cost one to connect three terminals. Previously in the tree, the cost was two. And we say, well, that improves, you know, that gives you a, a ratio of uh, one half in that quantity. We want that as small as possible. And then we do this. So that's how the previous method that. And after you do it, we contract this uh, hyper edge B. And we, can, we keep going as long as the, that the weight of B is smaller than the cost of the edges it replaces. Okay. This is known, uh, done by Zelikovsky in 1996. And the ratio you get is uh, one plus logarithm uh, of um, the cost of the initial spanning tree divided by optimum. And that one is two for the Steiner tree, but here is four for our problem. So the ratio uh, Cohen and Newton got was one plus logarithm of four uh, plus epsilon. And that's, uh, there is an epsilon because we lose an epsilon because we fix the number K here. So when we use relative greedy in this approach. Okay. All right, so uh, uh, we look at the algorithms and uh, because we suspected they are better than they really are. And they actually may be better. None of them is known to be tight. Uh, but uh, anyway, looking at those, we obtained that uh, if we have a, a Steiner uh, component with one Steiner point, uh, the, the proof says, oh, you can do it 2.5, but you can really do it with two, right? Because you, you are going to have in integer number of points you insert. So it's two instead of 2.5. If, uh, if it's three, if optimum uses three, then uh, 
you can get a 3D composition with seven, not 7.5. I mean, okay, you can get with at most 7.5, but really is at most seven. And then we work really hard to say that if it has two Steiner points, it can be replaced by a, a, a full comp a three restricted components of total cost of four and not five. You know, 2.5 times uh, two, that'll be five, but really you can do it with four. Okay, that, that was really a five page geometric uh, uh, argument that this graph as a unit, this graph doesn't exist. Right, so this cannot happen. That all the edges between points here have distance at most one and the uh, edges that are not drawn have, uh, if there, there is no edge drawn, the distance is bigger than one, okay. And we even published this five page proof to find out that uh, in fact, it was done. This particular part was done in 2011 in a paper by my colleague, one. Okay. So with these two together, we said, well, if uh, we use the, the 3D composition, we really have two times the number of uh, components with one Steiner point in optimum four if he has two, seven it has three, and we save something, this quantity lambda. So we will get a ratio 2.5 minus lambda. Of course, lambda could be zero. In that case, uh, uh, we are gonna use the other algorithm because uh, the, uh, also in previous work, the minimum, uh, the BD composition, uh, it's not really four times optimum. It's three times optimum plus the number of components. So if the number of components is uh, small, then we approach one plus logarithm of three. In fact, because this was one of logarithm times the cost of the T zero divided by opt. And we prove that here with that lambda I defined before the cost uh, of the spanning tree, divided by opt, here we get logarithm of 3.5 divided by three over two times that lambda. And that there was nothing there but uh, algebra to get uh, uh, with this lambda that we get this. So, and now depends on the value of lambda. If lambda is smaller than something, you use this algorithm and you otherwise we use the other algorithm because we get to self a lambda over here, we get 2.5 minus lambda. And overall, we got this ratio, 2.27. Okay, that were my 20 minutes. Uh, let me quickly mention the other problem. So there's quasi bipartite Steiner tree and the cost of the edges, uh, there is no edge connecting two terminals. So that was one question that was asked before. If there is no edge connected to terminal, then the, the, met, the metric we get has a special structure which has been used by algorithms to get a better ratio. So this one's first ratio published was 1.5 and then improved by a number of papers to 73, 73 over 60. Although those papers also deal with Steiner tree in general, but for this special case, when there is no edge connecting to terminals in the initial graph, the approximation ratio is better, all right? It was seven, 73 divided by 60. And we got, uh, okay, so that's the problem. So there is no edge between terminals. Uh, and we got a ratio with the same method of using either this algorithm or the other algorithm of 298 divided by 245. Now that's, that's a really small improvement, but it's smaller than 73 over 60. So there is, I mean, reason why people should start working on this uh, problem and get something better. Okay, and I move to conclusion. So we just did was analyze, better anal analyze of two uh, ex uh, existing algorithms to obtain that the best of the two gets a ratio uh, better than the existing one. So, of course, we first thing we have to say, well, what, what if we can improve the Steiner tree approximation ratio, which will be a major result that one plus logarithm of four 
which is the best known since 2010, but uh, it doesn't work. So we have an examples where both algorithms, the 3D composition and the best one for Steiner tree, inter, uh, iterative randomized rounding, both of them are tight. I mean, for the iterative randomized rounding, it's not so much the algorithm is tight, it's the, the, the proof is tight. So we, we, we cannot improve that problem with this idea. And yes, please ask me questions. Uh, I'm, I'm done with my presentation.